welcome, welcome, welcome to the Boxing Bookie. We are good. It's good to be back. It is good to be back. All right, y'all. Uh, we're going to get into the big one. Tank Davis and Frank Martin. Uh, before we do, please like, share, and subscribe. Follow 3D Boxing, 3D Boxing Blog. Uh, join the Patreon. Link is in the description. Uh, it's also in that little ticker below. Join the Patreon. We hit the lock of the week again last week. We hit it every single week. This, uh, the Patreon is just $5 a month. You get all the best advice. You get uh, inside uh, prop bets that aren't released, like the props for this fight aren't released. We'll get the props on this one when they're dropped. Uh, you'll get Ask the Bookie Anything. You get the lock of the week, which is guaranteed easy money, easy money uh, that we make every single that we make that we're making every single week. So join the Patreon. Link is in the description. Uh, so let's bring down the house together. There's always a bull market somewhere. I'm going to show you how to make money consistently betting on the sport of boxing. All right, let's also. I'm losing my brain here. Uh, subscribe to the channel, Texas Boxing Scene on YouTube. That's Texas Boxing Scene. All proceeds go to autism research and recovery. All right, let's get into today's show. Tank Davis, Frank Martin. Um, let's start with, with, with Tank Davis. This is an interesting one. Uh, WBA World Lightweight titles online. Remember, that's a belt that Tank Davis has. He hasn't defended it in uh, Hector Garcia, about a year and a half. About a year and a half ago was the last time he defended that bout, which they allowed for him to keep it. I'm not exactly sure why, but it's not getting into that. Tank Davis, um, Southpaw, short, and he fights short. We, we all are very familiar with, with, with Tank Davis. He's constantly moving. He's a good defensive fighter for what he is. He fights off the back foot. This is a fight where everyone thinks Frank Martin goes, goes backwards and Tank Davis goes forward, except – that's not really how either one of them fights. Frank Martin fights a lot more off the front foot than you think he does, and Tank Davis fights a lot more off the back foot than you think he does. Now, I, I'm not sure what all that means, uh, but Tank Davis is a guy that's constantly moving. He uses the ring really well. He's a good defensive fighter. He picks up shots really well. It, a lot of times, he'll be the high guard. He'll pick your shots, pick your shots, he'll throw your guard down, or throw your guard down and throw it a straight left over it. Uh, he picks his shots really well. He's very patient. He's not a high-volume guy by any means. But he's very selective with his shots. He sets up his shots well. He's a very high IQ guy. I know people, there's an idea that Tank Davis is a stupid guy. He's a very high IQ fighter. He obviously has amazing power and amazing timing. And, and the power and the timing is what makes Tank special. Excellent feet, quick feet. He's highly athletic, highly coordinated. Like He's the type of guy that could be good at any single sport he plays. Right? Like His, his footwork, his coordination, it, it, it it's all second nature to him. He disguises his punches really well. Like, if you go back and you watch the Leo Santa Cruz knockout, Leo Santa Cruz drops his hands thinking he's going to the body. Tank turns the upper, turns the up, up the uppercut, and it, it, it's night night. The uppercut, right now, that left uppercut is, is probably the best punch in boxing, right? His uppercut is probably the, the, the best punch in boxing. He showed in the uh, Isak Cruz fight that he can box. He, he won the 12th round in that fight, boxing off the back foot in a fight that he had to win. Now, this is important because you can win rounds with Tank Davis. Frank Martin is going to win rounds in this fight. It's just, can he go the distance like Isak Cruz did? If Frank Martin can go the distance, Frank Martin is going to win this fight. Like Now, that's a massive question. How many guys have been able to go the distance with Tank Davis? The answer is exactly two. Uh, Isak Cruz, and then who went in the distance? Does anyone know who survived? He had to be in, in total survival mode. Let me see if I can find out who went the distance with him. German Ivan Marez in 2014, 10 years ago, went the distance with Tank. And this is a guy that, that fights everyone, and he's actually been knocked out eight times in the 69 losses. So that, that's interesting. He, he went the distance with Tank. So in the last 10 years, one guy, Isak Cruz, may be able to go the distance with him. So this is not an easy thing to do. Frank Martin, you know, has Tank Davis really fought a, a lightning-fast guy? He really hasn't. A speech, I know Ryan Garcia's got great hand speed, but Ryan Garcia's not fighting the way that Frank Martin is. Frank Martin is, I think, by far the most skilled boxer that he's fought. 
he gives a great body puncher because he slow him down. He stays behind the the, the, the high guard. Uh, he, but he gets hit a lot, right? He does get hit a lot, especially with jabs. Um, a, a lightning quick guy. Isak Cruz is not lightning quick. A lightning quick guy like Frank Martin can have success with them from long range. He can keep him there. Can he keep him there? Because he can win rounds. Tank Davis is okay with losing rounds. He lost rounds to Hector Garcia. He lost a couple rounds to Ryan Garcia. He lost rounds to Isak Cruz. He lost rounds to Mario Barrios. He's a guy who's okay with losing rounds because he knows he's going to end it with one shot at some point. Can Martin survive that? If, I guess I keep saying if Martin can survive that, Martin can win this fight. Martin is such a complete fighter. He gets in and out so well. He's got lightning quick hands, lightning quick feet, lightning quick reflexes. Great athlete, slick southpaw who comes forward, who lands solid. He doesn't have sensational power. He's not you know, a, a one-hitter quitter like Tank or anything like that. But he's a guy who can punch. Frank Martin is a guy who can punch. He is the perfect boxer puncher kind of guy. 18-0, 12 knockouts, 29 years old, in his absolute peak. Now, he's coming off a fight, his last fight, which a lot of people weren't impressed by, and it was his worst fight. Now, he's coming out of a terrible camp. This was the camp that Errol Spence fought two weeks later. Then you had uh, Ryan Garcia had just moved to Texas to get in Derek James' camp. It was a horrible camp. And everyone in that camp had a career worst night. Honestly. Uh, so it's a little bit different camp, a little bit less distractions. I expect them to be better. Tank, Frank Martin's a guy. Frank Martin is a guy that hides his punch as well, slip shots well, can fight up the front foot, can fight up the back foot, quick counter puncher, throws in combinations. He's going to win rounds. Now, if you think he's going to get knocked out, there's a very good chance he's going to get knocked out. He's going to be up on the cards when he does. That doesn't matter that he's going to be up on the cards when he gets knocked out. Right? I said the same thing about Ryan Garcia. Ryan Garcia was going to be up on the cards. He probably wasn't. But uh, Frank Martin's got good volume, good feet. He's going to be able to land. He's going to be able to score. Good counter puncher. Quick with his counter shots. Real quick. Slick, quick movement. Like I said, those twitchy reflexes. Mixes up head and body. well. Frank Martin is a... Tremendous, tremendous fighter. He's an amazing fighter. Does any of that matter with Frank? You know what I'm saying? Like Tank Davis's power is the unequalizer. Is any of that going to matter over 12 rounds? It'll matter for a round or two or three. But at a certain point, does he just get clipped and it's over? So here's the bet. <clears throat> I'm going to bet he does not. And the reason why I'm going to bet is purely mathematical. It's purely financial. Gun to my head. I say Javante probably gets him out. And when the props drop, we're going to take Javante by knockout as well. So we're going to bet this two ways. We're going to bet Javante Davis by stoppage when that pop, or we're going to take the under. We're going to look at that. Frank Martin at plus 450, you have to take this bet. You have to. It's it, it, this is a very close fight that there's a path to victory for Frank Martin. When Tank Davis is a 7-1 favorite in a very competitive fight, you can't, it doesn't make sense to bet this because Davis could lose and you're not winning any money. The only way that we can make money on this fight is Javante Davis by knockout. We don't have that prop available. When we do, we will drop a video on that. I'm going to do a second video on this. So stay tuned for that. Also join the Patreon. I'll go down over all the props. I'll show you how to make money on all the props. For this, we're taking Frank Martin. Because like I said, he's plus 450. Meaning that if they fought five times, Frank Martin would have been half a time. That's insane. Like Frank Martin is so good. He's so skilled. Frank Martin is an amazing boxer puncher. He's got incredible skill. These odds are an insult. You have to take Frank Martin on the money line. And then we're going to hedge it with Davis by knockout when that becomes available. All right. But th these odds are criminal right now. Like, this is so disrespectful off of Martin, off of one performance. Let me know what you guys think. This is what we're all with Frank Martin on the money line, plus 450. Uh, we'll probably do half a bet on that, which would make us 225. So I'm saying the odds on this is crazy. Um, let's pull up. Let's. Uh, I didn't pull it up. 
We're going to do half a bet on this. Whatever your normal bet is, put half of it. $50. So if your normal bet is $100, put $50 on Frank Martin. It's going to make you $225. It's worth the risk, guys. And we're, I'm, I'm going to show you all how to hedge it when the props when the props come out. This is what I'm talking about. The odds makers, the bookies, they don't know what they're doing. They don't know what they're doing. So we're going to do another bet. We're going to take Tank Davis to hedge this by stoppage. In, in some, We're going to bet the fight does not go the distance. Um, but let me know what you guys think. Leave your thoughts, comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe. I, I know this is going to rub a lot of you guys the wrong way. I understand. I get it. It doesn't make sense to put this much money on Tank Davis. This is a much closer fight than that. This is a fight. If Frank Martin couldn't win, could not win this fight, if there was no chance Frank Martin could outbox him, then I would pick Tank Davis. I would say, look, there's not a lot of money. You know, do not parlay this fight. This fight will mess up your parlay. Don't parlay this. This is not a good fight to parlay. I will tell you when there's good fights to parlay. This is a very even fight. This is a very, very even fight. Let me know what you guys think. Leave your thoughts, comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe. Join the Patreon. Link is in the description. Remember this. Remember who gave you this fight. Uh, like, share, and subscribe. Follow 3D Boxing, 3D Boxing Blog, and all forms of social media. Uh, it is June 9th, 2024 from Texas to the world. Thank you, and God bless. <laughs> Don't miss a tweet, post, story, or video. 3D Boxing is on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Hit the subscribe button now to stay inside.